Bring up a quick photosensitive epilepsy warning for this one because Final Fantasy XIV has lots of flashing lights. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Weekly Waypoint where I figured it was about time that I recorded one in Final Fantasy XIV. Rest assured this is one of the earliest dungeons in the game and contains no spoilers or anything like that. This is just me running through it on my Archer class which is currently about level 20 and I thought I would try something new as you can probably tell given that this is sped up I've uh, removed the game audio and replaced it with a backing track or two uh, so let me know what you think about that I know most youtubers do it I just I just I've never tried doing it myself one half of the reason is because I'm lazy and it takes time to go out and find music to put in your video or to uh, record it from Spotify or whatever I ended up doing but the other half of it is just because a lot of the time I just feel like the game is weird without having the audio in it um, that's how I feel from an editing perspective, but from a YouTube video watching perspective, I don't even notice, um, and it probably helps to keep people engaged, it's probably the reason why everyone does it, so yeah, that, that, let me know what you thought. I have of course been dedicating a very large segment of my free time to Final Fantasy XIV as I have been for the last few weeks, what can I say, it's got my hooks in me, be glad I wasn't doing the weekly waypoint back when I was first discovering World of Warcraft, because it was this, but well, that. What I will say is that since I started scheduling out my videos to be releasing on Thursdays and Sundays, I've changed it from Saturdays to Sundays because I think you'll agree it makes more sense, there's less of a gap between videos that way. Since I started scheduling them, I've, um, well, started getting very much ahead on weekly releases. Uh, let's just say that if I die you won't be short of video content until June. I have messed around with video scheduling once before, as you may remember I used to own a DVR channel before I edited my gameplay clips into videos which I post on this channel, um, and I got so far ahead I think I got nearly a year ahead in clip uploads uh, on that channel. I'm not going to do anything as crazy as that on this channel. If it gets to the point where I'm like a month ahead in videos I'll just start like making sure that I've got videos releasing more than twice a week, uh, at least when it comes to shenanigans style videos or adventures style videos. Speaking of which, look forward to some gameplay of me playing Final Fantasy 7 for the first time, that'll be coming out in a week or two, I actually don't remember anymore, probably two. It's basically my discovering series where if I was playing a game for the first time and um, going out of my way to document my first reactions to things, I would call it Discovering, but that's a shit name for a series, so now it's going to be called Blind Ventures, uh, because it's like adventures, except I'm very specifically pointing out in the title that I've never done this before, and I suppose you could say that my Final Fantasy XIV videos are Blind Ventures, um, but I'm going to be saving that kind of title for like single-player games, for games that I'm not going to be coming back to all the time for games that aren't constant online multiplayer experiences. So Final Fantasy VII, Blind Venture. Final Fantasy XIV, Adventures in Eorzea. It also helps that the planet has a name, or I guess I guess the planet's called Hydaelyn or whatever, but the land in which this game takes place is called Eorzea. In Final Fantasy VII, I know you've got Midgard, but I think that's only for like the first couple of hours in the game. After that, I don't know, they literally just call the planet, The Planet. I looked it up on the wiki. Somehow, Adventures in The Planet, or I guess it would have to be Adventures on the Planet, doesn't seem to work, does it? As for what my first reactions to that game actually are, I'll leave it for the video, um, but you probably got a taste for it on my Twitter. Speaking of constantly creating content out of things that I am trying to enjoy, I very specifically decided to stop recording thoughts per episode on Invincible. I talked about this a little bit on Twitter as well, but basically um, I'm getting a little bit burnt out on making thoughts on videos. I still haven't finished um, the second half of my thoughts on uh, the Cirque de Freak Omnibus Volume 2 video. I've read it, I just haven't recorded the Vampire Mountain stuff yet. Because I, who would have guessed talking about every single thing uh, that I experience when it comes to fiction gets a little bit tiring after a while. Perhaps the most frustrating thing is those videos do the best out of anything I do. I have people who subscribe to this channel purely to see what my thoughts are going to be in later Wheel of Time books, for example. I feel a little bit guilty because most of my other content has nothing to do with the stuff I record thoughts on for, um, but there you go. I guess you can still subscribe to playlists, maybe, but who does that? I mean, honestly. But either way, yeah, I, I got to Invincible Episode 3 and I found that 
it doesn't matter how much I enjoyed it because I absolutely loved it. I just didn't want to sit there and talk about every little thing in the episode. Um, and then I was like, it's okay, I'll just abandon this and do a general thoughts on for the Invincible Season 1 later on, where I'm not going for every episode, but I'm just giving my general thoughts on it. Um, but I, I just I didn't want to. And at the end of the day, I do this because I enjoy it. So I'm still going to be doing the thoughts on uh, every week for the Bad Batch, and I'm still going to continue doing thoughts ons for stuff like Wheel of Time series and stuff. But I'm going to be a bit more pick and choosy about what I record thoughts on content for and less completionist about it. But yeah, I'm not going to go into a whole review kind of thing about it, but I finished watching Invincible Season 1 this week and I absolutely loved it. It was super gripping um, for reasons which anyone who has seen the first episode will understand. I hate supporting Amazon. Um, I know that most super companies like that are awful, but you can't really boycott all of them, so Amazon is my one um, that I stopped supporting ages ago financially. Um, they, they have many, 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 many buckets full of money, but I'm not going to contribute any more drops to those buckets because that's a metaphor that makes sense. But <laughs> I really wanted to watch Invincible and that was the only way to watch it. And I was like, I'll do the free trial thing for a month. And they said, oh yeah, um, sign up for a free month of um, Amazon Prime. And I said, great. And it took me to the next screen and it was like, which do you want, Prime Video or Prime? And, it, and the button said something along the lines of subscribe now. And I was like, that doesn't seem like it's a free trial, does it? And sure enough, I clicked it and money came out of my account. Ah, oh, Amazon, you continue to be an absolute wank stain of a company. All the same, I kind of, um, I kind of told myself that, hey, I would pay to see a movie. I guess I'm paying six pounds to see a season of something. It's a similar kind of thing. Just a shame it's on Amazon, really, isn't it? Streaming services in general are so frustrating these days because, um, Someone mentioned Stargate SG-1, or just the Stargate stuff in general, and I was like, oh yeah, that would be a cool thing to watch through. What's it on? So I googled it, and they were like, Hulu. I was like, oh, that's basically Disney Plus's um, star thing, so it'll be on Disney Plus. It was not on Disney Plus. I was like, okay. And then I clicked on the where to watch thing, and it was like, it's on Netflix. And I clicked the link, and it took me directly to the show on Netflix, which isn't available to watch anymore. And I've got a thing to remind me when it gets back on there, but it, that's not going to go back on there. And it's like, okay, great. And it seems like there's a UK version of Hulu now, but that's another streaming service. And I don't understand how that can exist alongside Star, which is basically most of the Hulu streaming service on Disney. And, oh man, it's just so fucking tiring. Remember when, if you wanted to watch something, you could just go to Netflix and it would probably be on Netflix? I miss those days, man. So yes, yeah, not getting into Stargate anytime soon. And of course there is a subsection of people who might be watching this who are just going, Christian, just go to watch this thing online.com or whatever to watch it illegally. And I don't have any qualms about like circumventing the law in that kind of a way, but I do have qualms about, I don't know, like I know it's just a drop in the bucket, but I want to make sure that the people who made this show get to actually be uh, compensated for me viewing the show. I know, I'm boring like that, I'm sorry. And I know some of that money, probably most of that money, goes to the service like Amazon that I don't particularly like, but eh, what can you say? Also, it's just better quality when it's streaming officially. It's still funny to look back on the age before streaming was a thing, and you would still have to go out and buy box sets of television shows that you were interested in, um, and most of us just watched them online for free. And it's like, that, that was video streaming, like, and it was going on for years before someone said, wait, what if we did this and we just charged for it? And then everyone was like, yeah, sure, we'll pay you like six quid a month or whatever it was back then, because it's just more convenient. And it's it's crazy to think that like it took them that long to figure it out and, and that it was ever not the way that it is now. It's also fun to look at that in regards to uh, what Xbox Game Pass are doing and what a lot of um, game streaming services are doing. And um, they're very different for sure. Like I think a lot of game piracy probably stopped around the time games became available digitally to buy. It's not quite the same kind of one-to-one -one scale, but it's interesting all the same. I still have doubts that game streaming is the future though. Like, I think Game Pass is perfect because it lets you download the games, and I don't see 
why, why they would ever stop giving you the ability to download the games and why that would ever not be the primary way for people to enjoy that content. Like, I can see discs going away, that's definitely going to happen soon. Um, like, there might still be collector's editions, but they probably won't contain discs, or if they do contain a disc, it won't be a functional disc, it will just be like a little, oh, cute, a disc thing. Um, but I, I think discs are going away, but I don't think digital downloads are ever going to be replaced with game streaming, unless some crazy new technology comes along that eliminates any kind of input lag for most people streaming games. Because, I mean, I can stream a game, I can stream Forza Motorsport 7 to my PC right now, and it will look fantastic. It will look as good as I would ever want game streaming to look. Like, an absolute smidgen of artifacting there to kind of differentiate it from a downloaded game. But, like, honestly, passable, like, completely, like, you wouldn't think about it within a minute of playing. The one thing that throws me off, and I guess I talked about this a few weeks ago, but it's just, like, the input lag, and it's not necessarily, like, that gif you see of a guy pressing spacebar and a character jumping, it's not Stadia. <laughs> it's really fucking good, but it's still, like, absolutely minute, but it, like, it, it just kind of creates this feeling of disconnect between you and the game. Um, which is hard to get out. So yeah, whenever anyone tells me that in 5-10 years we'll all be streaming all of our games, I, I kind of press X to doubt on that. Anyway, these last few weekly waypoints have been slightly more topical um, about talking points than they have been about particular video games that I've been playing during the week. The reason for that is because I've mostly just been playing Final Fantasy XIV and I don't want to keep rambling on about that every single week. Uh, especially because I wouldn't be able to talk about where I am now without talking about spoilers, you'd have to put like a hundred plus hours to even get to, so it's quite niche in that regard. Um, but all the same, if you enjoy these more topical style weekly waypoints, do be sure to let me know, and I will take that feedback into consideration, or alternatively if you prefer the kind of weekly waypoints where I just talk about what I played in a week, also let me know, because I will also consider going back to just talking about that. Um, wasn't really a conscious choice either way, but here we are. Anyway, thank you very much for watching, and I will see you next week.